Okay, before we start just, just testing the audio. Going to do a little. Okay, before we start just, just testing the audio. Okay, it seems to be working. I apologize for the previous video, which was, um, it's there was no sound basically, so I talked for 19 minutes into a uh, <laughs> to no one, unless you're a very good lip reader, you had no idea what I was saying. But I was talking about the massacre in Sri Lanka over Easter Sunday and um, or Resurrection Day, as uh, Christians call it. Um, uh, the people who were killed were, were Christians. They weren't Easter worshipers, whatever that term implies. Seems to have been sent out on, um, been sent out by memo to every high ranking democratic politician or office holder and Hillary Clinton. But I just wanted to clarify some things because the media is already in overdrive, just distorting, well, basically distorting everything. What Islam is, who the perpetrators are, who the real victim, uh, who the re who the real, <clears throat> excuse me, who the real victims are. And I just want to clarify some of these things. Uh, First of all, by, by recommending that people who are interested in the condition of uh, Christianity and the lives of Christians check out a book published nearly going on three decades. It was published in 1990, written by a man named William McGowan, a very good journalist and writer who spent time in Sri Lanka right after the Indian armed forces left. They briefly occupied Sri Lanka in order to impose, uh, impose a peace settlement. It was ultimately unsuccessful between the Hindu Tamils and the majority Sinhalese Buddhists. And he wrote this book right around the time that Rahiv Gandhi, the Prime Minister of India, was assassinated by the Tamil Tigers, the Liberation, um, the LTTE, which was one of the m most potent terrorist groups for the better part of two decades before the Civil War was effectively ended by military action by the Sri Lankan military in 2009. But it's a great book because it describes in detail the, the civil conflict and the civil war between the Hindu mi minority and the Buddhist majority. But what I took away from the book was how beleaguered the Christian community in Sri Lanka is they comprise a little bit less than 8%, between 8 and 9% uh, th or thereabouts of the population. They're a very small portion of the population, smaller than the Muslim, Muslim population. <clears throat> and they've been nothing but a blessing to Sri Lanka. They've, they've, they embody Romans... Um, 12, the idea of living uh, peaceably with your neighbor. And, and Paul's admonition to obey the law and respect your rulers, even if they're not believers, even if they're idolaters. And they embody... Um, embody this this uh, command, and they've built hospitals and education. They've 
they've been nothing but a blessing, and yet they've been relentlessly persecuted and forced to, even when they were they were not the direct targets of hatred and violence, they've been forced to uh, labor under uh, just uh, horrific conditions. The tr the for example the the schools that, that they set up the um, the schools that uh, the Lutherans set up were were taken over by the state and they've done nothing to complain or resist or protest and yet they're relentlessly persecuted and now they're being slaughtered by by a group of unbelievers, of believers in a false gospel that receives adulatory uh, press coverage, press coverage, and even now, even as they're mourning their loved ones who are killed by by these people, they are being blamed in effect for their own deaths. They, there, there are headlines in the Washington Post and similarly despicable outlets that that are, are asking whether this will lead to a rise in Islamophobia or accusing right the right wing of, of ca capitalizing upon this misfortune as if the cold-blooded and systematic massacre of Christians is something that something whose main um, something who, who, whose main consequence will be the, the the fact that people people think badly of Islam, which people should think badly of because they're responsible for thousands and thousands of deaths every single year and it's just stunning how all these people who have done nothing but um, have done nothing but bless this little country are condemned and vilified even in their grief. And um, one of the reasons, and this is something that's pointed out in the book "Only Man Is Five, is because they're conflated with the British because um, the, the, these, these are people that speak English. They're, a lot of them, a lot of their, their ancestors became Christian after contact with um, the British or the Portuguese. So they're associated with the colonial powers, even though they, they really have nothing to do with these former colonial powers. And that's the reason that ISIS attacked them. They, they attacked tourist locations and churches because Islamic jihadists and Muslims conflate capitalism with Christianity. They see both as facets of the West, of this amorphous monster that they need to exterminate. And... That's uh, that's why they chose these targets. So, but because so so even if if someone's an atheist, even if some someone doesn't believe in Christ, they are um, conflated by virtue of being from the West with uh, Christians, and yet no one examines the fact that the people who perpetrate this massacre were, as I said, in, as, as I said repeatedly, these were people doing Islam. Uh, to, to, to paraphrase Ilhan Omar, these weren't people doing things, these were people doing Islam. And this is what, if you're a scrupulous Muslim who actually believes in the Quran, and believes you should follow the precepts of the Quran, this is what you would be doing. You'd be murdering Christians or uh, in or, or kafir, as they describe them. This is what a consistent 
approach to Islam um, results in, as David Wood pointed out in his mockumentary series, Islamicize Me. And the idea that the media is trying to perpetuate that Muslims in Sri Lanka are this pe this peaceful, they're Sufi, so they're peaceful and they're not harmed, is simply uh, completely false. It, as uh, the apostate prophet has pointed out repeatedly, and he was raised in a Sufi Muslim family uh, of Turkish origin in Germany, Sufism, just because it's associated with peace and peace in the West, that's not necessarily what it is in reality. Uh, there, some of the most brutal Muslim empires were, were Sufi, as Robert Spencer points out in his uh, magisterial book, The History of Jihad from Muhammad to ISIS. And if you want an example of, of why this victim narrative vis-a-vis uh, -vis Muslims is false, just look at Rifka Barry. This was a young woman who found Christ and became a Christian in spite of her Muslim parents' objections. And her Muslim parents would have murdered her were she not helped by, um, by compassionate Christians and people like my friend Pamela Geller who highlighted her case as she was litigating her right to... Uh, basically, her right to be free and to worship her, worship God, not and not uh, worship Allah. And she was fighting fighting this because her parents would have murdered her if they had gotten their way. And these people were from Sri Lanka, even though they they lived in Ohio. Uh, Rifka Barry was um, uh, Tamil. I believe, uh, a, t a Tamil Muslim, uh, 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 she came from a Tamil Muslim family. And this is just one example. The idea um, that the media is uh, perpetuating now that Islam in Sri Lanka is peaceful is simply false. They're trotting out uh, examples of Buddhists attacking Muslim mosques. Now the Buddhist majority in Sri Lanka is uh, intolerant to a large degree, but they're stripping, stripping this of context and the fact that these attacks were occasioned by Muslim jihad and persecution of non-Muslims, just like they were in Burma, just like they were in Thailand. Uh, so of course the media is uh, kind of deracinating this to make it to make it seem like these were just crazy Buddhists attacking Muslims for no reason. The people who, who who have provided no reason for offense are the Christians living in Sri Lanka. Like I said, they abide by the um, they abide by the God uh, <clears throat> the commands in the gospel by Christ, and also the the Pauline epistles, uh, particularly the epistle to the Romans, to live peaceably with their neighbor and to uh, bless those who persecute them. And yet all they receive is persecution in return and, and uh, calumny and slander and libel from the Western press. And it's despicable, but that's just a, a fact. Now, um, just to wrap up, and I really hope that I'm not uh, talking into the void here, <laughs> but um, I would suggest going to the Gatestone Institute, their website, also Raymond Ibrahim. They've been covering persecution of Christians very uh, extensively. And again, uh, check out the book, Only Man is Vile, to get some insight into the Christian community in Sri Lanka.